Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Kairos Time and it is Time to Brawl and you know that I'm the real Kairos because Time to Brawl makes sense, Tim to Brawl does not. Just saying. Today we are going to find out who the best assassin in Brawl Stars is. Introducing the action assassin, the dashing assassin, the toxic assassin, the stealthy assassin, the buzz assassin, and of course, uh, just assassin. We're gonna start off by putting these six assassins against each other in the five Olympics events that I think are most important for an assassin. Each brawler will get one point for every Olympics event that they are number one in. After that, each assassin will face off against each of the other assassins in a 1v1 matchup and they will get one point for every round they win. And the brawler at the end with the most points will be declared the best assassin in Brawl Stars. But first. Now many of you guys know that one of my all time favorite games ever is MiHoYo's Genshin Impact. Now, what you might not know is the fact that the world of Genshin Impact and the world of Honkai Impact 3rd are actually related. I don't know all the details behind it, but I want to give a huge thank you to Mihoyo for sponsoring this video. In Honkai Impact 3rd, you control a team of up to three characters known as Valkyries in real-time action combat against various enemies. Now, each Valkyrie is either strong or weak against different types of enemies, so you'll actually want to switch between them depending on the enemies that you're facing for the best advantage. Honestly, the combat is a ton of fun, and I love switching between between characters for massive combos. Now, if you're familiar with Honkai Impact, you'll be excited to learn that Kiana has a new fiery great sword battle suit with epic sword blasts that she can even unleash midair. And by downloading the game, you guys can redeem the gift code on the screen right here for a trial of this awesome battle suit. And this code will come with some other free goodies, including some crystals as well. You're gonna wanna click on the link in the description below to download this for free because now is a great time to play Honkai Impact so you can take part in their summer events. They're actually releasing some awesome skins, including this one one where you can literally destroy enemies by whacking them with a shark. Honkai Impact 3rd is a ton of fun to play, and if you're a fan of Mahoyo games like I am, I definitely think you need to try this out, especially to get your hands on Kiana's Hersher of Flame Scion battle suit. Thank you for watching, and thanks to Mahoyo for sponsoring this video. The Burst Test. This test measures how much damage a brawler can do in three seconds. Although Stu can charge and recharge his super very quickly, the damage dealt from it doesn't stack and it deals very little damage over a period of time. And Stu's main attack is his only other source of damage, so he ends up dealing 7,336 damage in three seconds and comes in last place in the burst test out of all the assassins. Mortis doesn't do much better since his main attack actually deals less damage than Stu's, but with the help of his super along with his combo spinner gadget, he deals 7,600 damage and places fifth. Unlike like Mortis and Stu, Leon's only source of damage is his main attack, but because he deals so much damage up close, Leon's able to deal 8,064 damage and he comes in fourth place. Now the biggest advantage that Edgar has is that his reload speed is so fast that he's actually able to hit the boss a fifth shot within those three seconds. With the extra 100 damage from his hard landing star power, he deals a total of 8,560 damage which places him in third. Now Buzz is another brawler that can only deal damage with his main attack, but he fires five projectiles with each ammo, and since all five projectiles hit the boss with each shot, Buzz is able to deal 8,820 damage, and he comes in second place. Now, Crow kind of gets to cheat a little bit in this test, since all the projectiles from his super can actually hit the boss because it has such a large hitbox. So Crow repeatedly uses his super and deals 32,680 damage in three seconds, which places him in first by a long shot. This means that Crow gets one point and the rest of the brawlers are still at zero. The race test. Having high speed is really important for an assassin so that they can get close to their enemies. Stu is the only assassin that has a normal movement speed, which makes him slower than the rest. Even though his super paired with his breakthrough gadget gives him a few boosts, he still comes in last place, finishing in 9.5 seconds. Edgar's super allows him to jump very far forward and gives him a quick speed boost. Unfortunately, Edgar's Let's Fly gadget doesn't charge his super fast enough to charge a second super, so Edgar places fifth, finishing in nine seconds. Now Crow uses his super to hop forward, but his super is just a tiny bit faster than Edgar's. Since both of them have a very fast movement speed, Crow barely comes in fourth, finishing in 8.8 .8 seconds. Now, Leon uses his smoke trail star power to give him a 30% speed boost for the whole length of his super, which lasts for six seconds. This allows Leon to finish in 8.6 seconds and he gets third place. Now, Buzz uses his super to grapple the wall in front of him, which propels himself forward very quickly. And then he uses his gadget to instantly charge his super a second time, which allows him to get a pretty solid advantage. He he finishes in 7.6 seconds and takes second place. Now Mortis gets to use his Coiled Snake Star power to cover some extra ground with his first dash. He then activates his Survival Shovel Gadget and is able to dash six more times, which gives him the fastest time of 6.9 seconds. This means that Mortis gets a point and is currently tied with Crow for first place. The Range Test. 
Now, most of the assassins don't have that long of a range, but it is very important. Unfortunately for Edgar, his attack only reaches two and two thirds tiles, so he gets last place in the attack range test. Now, Buzz has a lot more width than his main attack, but can only stretch a little bit further than Edgar's. He reaches three and one third tiles and places fifth. Now, normally Mortis's attack range is the same as Buzz's, but with his coiled snake star power, it actually increases his attack range by two tiles, so Mortis comes in fourth place with an attack range of five and one third tiles. Stu really widens the gap with a main attack attack range of eight tiles, which is almost three tiles longer than Mortis's. That means Stu takes third place for attack range. Crow further widens the gap with an attack range of eight and one third tiles, which is enough for second place. Now, although they may not deal a lot of damage when they get there, Leon's projectiles can travel up to nine and two third tiles, which is the furthest range of all the assassins. That means that Leon, Mortis, and Crow now all have one point. The survival test. An assassin is only as good as long as he's still alive, which is why the assassin test is so important. Crow doesn't have a lot of health, but he is able to decrease the sniper bot's damage with his extra toxic star power, and then he can also use his defense booster gadget to prevent some of the damage, and he actually has enough time to use it three times. In this test, you're not allowed to kill the sniper bot, and you're not allowed to dodge shots, and Crow ends up surviving for 14 seconds, which places him in dead last. Buzz only has one way for him to prolong the inevitable death against the sniper bot, and that's a short stun that he can do against the bot. Now, I accidentally let Buzz stun the sniper bot, which isn't actually allowed for the survival test. Either way, he still ends up in fifth place, since the only way for him to survive is the fact that he has a decent amount of HP. He survives for 16 seconds, which gets him in fifth place. Now, Stu is able to recover 500 health with his super paired with his Gaso Heal star power. This does require Stu to be very careful about aiming so that only one of the two projectiles hits for each ammo. And that way, Stu is able to keep the sniper bot alive for as long as possible. Once the sniper bot is below 800 HP, Stu is no longer able to attack it without killing it. So he survives for 16.7 seconds and takes fourth place. Now, Mortis has a good amount of health as well, but he can use his super to heal himself once. Now in the past, I've let Mortis heal against other bots in the training cave, but I've decided that that's not fair, which means that Mortis only survives for 18 seconds and places third. Now Edgar can use his main attack to heal himself multiple times, and his fisticuff star power increases that healing by 25%. Also gets to use his hardcore gadget, which gives him a shield that blocks several of the sniper bots bullets. Edgar survives for 23.6 seconds, which means that he gets second place. And a first place is obviously Leon, thanks to his invisi heal star power, which heals him a total of 6,000 HP over six seconds. He's able to survive for 27 seconds. He takes first place and Leon is now at two points. The boss test. Now, although the assassins typically don't do too well in the boss test, it does a really good job at showing which assassin is the most well-rounded because it represents how much damage they can do over the period of an entire match. Even though Mortis can deal a good amount of damage very quickly, like we saw in the burst test, his reload speed is very slow, so he has a lot of trouble taking down the boss. On top of that, it takes a lot of hits for his super to charge up, and Mortis ends up defeating the boss in two minutes and 25 seconds and easily comes in dead last. Now, Stu also has a slow reload speed, but his main attack deals a little bit more damage which makes a big difference. He can also charge his super super fast, which allows him to keep the boss on fire the entire time. Stu defeats the boss in one minute and 24 seconds and places fifth. Now, Leon doesn't get any help from his super, gadget, star power, or anything like that, so he has to rely solely on his regular attack, which has a slow reload speed. Thankfully, Leon can deal a ton of damage when he's up close, and so he just so happens to beat Stu by two seconds with a score of one minute and 22 seconds. This places him in fourth. Now, even though Buzz's super can be very very useful, it doesn't help him at all in this challenge. But he deals even more damage than Leon with his main attack, and his reload speed is way faster. Buzz is able to defeat the boss in 55 seconds and takes third place. Now, Edgar actually has the third fastest reload speed in the game. He also has a very strong main attack and is able to use his hard landing star power to add a little bit of extra damage with his super. By using everything he has, Edgar is able to take out the boss in 52 seconds, so he takes second place. And once again, Crow gets to use his super to its full potential, which makes it so that he doesn't even have to use his main attack. Using a super over and over and over again allows him to defeat the boss in just 14.6 seconds, which is insane. And honestly, it's kind of cheating, but he still wins first place. And that means that Crow and Leon now have two points, Mortis has one, and Buzz, Edgar, and do have zero points. But now we're down to arguably the most important part of the video, the 1v1 test. Each of these six assassins will face each of the other assassins in a 1v1 matchup where they can use their attack, super, gadget, and any other ability that they have to try and take each other out. Now they'll get one point for each victory, which means that even though the scores are like this right now, any brawler could still win. Let's get started. Leon versus Edgar. 
Now Leon waits for Edgar to hit the ground after Edgar uses his super and recovers a little bit of health from his Invisi Heal star power. He then unloads all of his shots as fast as possible, but it is not enough to defeat Edgar since Edgar activates his hardcore gadget and he heals while he's dealing damage. Edgar barely defeats Leon in round one and takes his first point. Buzz vs. Stu Buzz uses his super to stun Stu, and he remains stunned for half a second because of Buzz's tougher torpedo star power. By the time Stu gets out of the stun, Buzz has dealt so much damage to him that he only has time to fire one shot before he's defeated, and Buzz easily beats Stu, taking his first point. Mortis vs. Crow after Crow uses his super, Mortis uses his super to recover some health, and then they both unload their ammo as fast as possible. With Crow's defense booster gadget activated, he's able to survive Mortis' main attacks, but is defeated by Mortis' combo spinner gadget right before Mortis dies to Crow's poison. Mortis barely beats Crow in round one and takes his second point. Leon vs. Buzz Leon activates his super and tries to heal as much damage as possible while he is stunned. But once again, Buzz deals so much damage in such a short amount of time that Leon is only able to fire off one of his shots after breaking free of the stun, which means that he dies and Buzz gets his second point. Mortis vs. Edgar Mortis uses his super to recover the damage taken from Edgar's super. He then uses all of his attacks and his gadget, but it isn't quite enough to break through Edgar's gadget and defeat him. Edgar beats Mortis and gets his second point as well. Crow vs. Stu now, Stu instantly activates his speed zone gadget to block any damage from Crow's super. He also uses his super to distance himself from Crow to avoid a couple of daggers. After a few more Stu supers, which each heal him a little bit, he is barely able to defeat Crow and he wins his first point. Leon vs. Mortis Leon fires a couple of his shots and then activates his super to heal up a bit. He tries to live through Mortis' attacks and his gadget in order to take advantage of Mortis' slow reload speed, but Mortis just deals too much damage too quickly and defeats Leon. That means that Mortis actually takes the lead with three points. Crow vs. Buzz Crow uses his super and deals a good amount of damage to Buzz right at the start. Buzz then stuns Crow, but not before Crow is able to activate his gadget. Because of his shield, Crow is able to survive being stunned with enough health to unload all of his shots on Buzz, and unfortunately, Buzz survives with a sliver of health and then finishes Crow off. Buzz also takes his third point. Stu vs. Edgar to start things off, Edgar uses his super to deal a little bit of damage to Stu. Stu then tries to use his super a couple of times to travel outside of Edgar's range and heal himself up a bit, but Edgar defeats Stu just before he can escape and Edgar gets his third point as well. Leon vs. Crow once Crow uses his super, Leon uses his to recover damage from Crow's takeoff. Before Crow lands on the ground, Leon actually activates his clone projector gadget to block the rest of Crow's super as well as Crow's first main attack. This gives Leon enough time to defeat Crow even with his shield and so Leon gets his third point. Stu vs. Mortis Stu fires his first shot and tries to get away from Mortis. After Mortis is hit a few times, he uses his super to recover damage while still using his main attack to chase Stu down. Mortis is able to keep up with Stu the whole time, takes him out, and claims his fourth point. Edgar vs. Buzz Edgar gets another head start with his super, but quickly gets stunned afterward. Similar to Crow, Edgar is able to activate his shield before getting stunned, so he's able to get out of the stun with a good amount of health. Sadly, it still is not enough time to defeat Buzz, and Buzz remains undefeated with four points. We are down to the final set of 1v1 matches, and here, thank you editor, is the scoreboard. Stu is in dead last and is facing against Leon. In second to last is Crow, who will be facing Edgar, and tied for first place is Buzz and Mortis, who will be facing off against each other in the championship. Only one can be crowned the king of the assassins. Leon vs. Stu Leon and Stu both activate their gadgets to force the other brawler to waste a little ammo. After Leon takes a little bit of damage, he activates his super and starts healing so quickly that Stu can't reload his shots fast enough to take him out. Even with Stu avoiding some of Leon's projectiles, Leon still has plenty of time to defeat Stu. And that means that Stu takes dead last with only one point, and Leon will tie for second place with four points. Edgar vs. Crow Edgar and Crow each use their super at the same time, but Edgar's is just a little bit faster, which means that Crow takes zero damage, and he actually deals damage to Edgar both on the way up and when he touches back down. With this massive head start, Crow is able to break through Edgar's shield and finish him off in the final round. This means that both Edgar and Crow tie for fourth place with three points. And for the championship, Buzz versus Mortis. 
Unlike the other assassins, Mortis has enough health to survive being stunned, but only with a little bit of health left. He instantly uses his super to regain enough health to start attacking, but by the time Mortis is ready to start dashing, Buzz has another super charged and easily defeats Mortis after stunning him a second time. And that means that Mortis ties with Leon for second place with four points, and the champion assassin with five points is Buzz. I want to know what you guys thought about the Assassin Olympics. Is Buzz actually the best? Is Stu actually the worst? Should Stu even be considered an assassin? Let me know in the comment section below and let me know which set of brawlers you'd like me to put up against each other in the next video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And then, of course, you can watch some previous videos right here. I, I recommend this one, actually. It's a, it's a really good one if you haven't seen it already. Use code Kairos and Brawl Star Shop to support the development of future videos. And for now, this is Kairos Time ticking by. We will see you in Brawl Stars.